Hey guys, it's me, Dave. Um, so this uh, may be a short series where I'm going to talk about uh, leftist theory. And the reason is um, I keep seeing uh, arguments online and there are some little baby leftists who are new to the scene um they're having trouble getting concise information it can be a lot to read theory um especially uh if you're reading like marx as an adult who already has a job and a family responsibilities um it's it can be a little dry reading okay and that dry reading is not made any easier when you have a lot of uh, stuff going on in your life that you have to take care of, right? Uh, un unfortunately, there are some uh, there are some brands of internet leftists that, uh, well, if you don't read theory, you don't know what you're talking about at all. Um, uh, a famous quote has come up a lot uh, since, since uh, I would say about eight or nine months ago is when I first started seeing it more and more. Uh, and that that quote is uh, a couple different ways it's worded, but the gist is uh, I haven't read Marx uh, on Capital, but. I have the marks of capital all over my body that that's the idea here is that you don't necessarily need to be an expert in theory to be a leftist or to understand leftist thought policies and even the theory itself uh, a lot of this stuff is is stuff you can extrapolate from from experience having worked in you know any uh any lower class jobs as as we tend to do but uh, there's there's that brand of leftists. There's also uh, a tendency that that we seem to have as online leftists that uh, it seems like we tend to take for granted uh, some of the some of the language we use and some of the terms we use and it's easy to forget that when we're in our little sphere, right, our vocabulary and everything is uh, sometimes really specialized. People outside of that sphere aren't going to be familiar with it necessarily. People who are new to our, to our movement and our ways of thinking may be excited to learn, but don't have uh, anyone giving them that push. So, Here's uh, today, I'm going to just give a brief explanation on the labor theory of value. Um, labor theory of value is, in some ways, the foundation of leftist uh, economic and political thought. It, it's the thing from which a bunch of other stuff springs forth. I decided to start with this one because there was an argument I witnessed about three days ago on the internet when somebody said that labor is entitled to all that it creates and a man in the comments said that's ridiculous you can't tell me that someone working in a factory that makes cars should be able to keep every car that comes off of the assembly line um, and this guy was being genuine uh, he thought that was the Marxist position on uh, car manufacturing was that the factory workers should be allowed to just keep every every single car, which isn't what any of that means. And a lot of people had a hard time believing that he believed that's what it meant. But it, it became pretty clear after a while. He wasn't joking or anything. He he was genuinely confused by the wording on that. 
So I figured the labor theory of value would be a good place to start. The labor theory of value is actually fairly simple. Um, but again, like I was talking about before, it's a, it's a term that's getting thrown around a lot by people on the left without a lot of explanation as to what it actually means. Um, so I'll give you a little history on the labor theory of value. Um, it actually started a little more complicated, mainly because there, there are two interpretations of what it really means. Uh, there's only one that we really use today. So one of the older interpretations of the labor theory of value is basically uh, anything is only worth the amount of labor you're willing to put in to get it. Okay. Um, now this works for just about anything. And it, it goes back to something I've said before. Uh, something is only as valuable as what people are willing to pay, right? Like uh, I go into an action figure group and somebody is selling, uh, let's say, a He-Man figure for what I think is a ridiculous amount of money. Now, it doesn't matter if I feel like that particular figure is worthless, if somebody is willing to pay $50 for that figure, that figure is worth $50. Someone's willing to pay that much to own it, right? Uh, that has some relation to what we're still talking about. But when we say labor theory of value nowadays, uh, it's actually more that something is as valuable as the labor put into producing it. And there are some caveats to that, which again, this is used as a critique of the left without people researching that there are caveats and things put into place. Uh, but a few interesting facts. Uh, the first is Marx never actually used the term labor theory of value. Marx thought that uh, labor theory of value was a little bit simple, um, reductive. He thought it was a, more complex than that and uh, actually put the work in to show it. The other interesting thing, um, mainly because of how anti-communist I've noticed a lot of uh, American Christians tend to be, is that uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, 750 years ago, actually summed up the labor theory of value. Uh, I wrote down the quote. So I can give you the quote. It's in his Summa Theologica. Uh, I read that back in college, not the whole thing, because it is super long and super detailed. It's basically uh, the, the sum of everything the Catholic Church believed in the Middle Ages, uh, which includes a lot of things like regular old church dogma and a lot of things like how to deal with witches and demons. Uh, there are some very interesting parts of it, but in uh, one part of the Summa Theologica, this is the, the direct quote from the English translation. Um, it says, uh, value can, does, and should increase in relation to the amount of labor which has been expended in the improvement of commodities. And that's the, the gist of it, is that if you have something, at every step, a worker has added something else to that thing that has made it more valuable. It could be uh, you have the tree. It gets more valuable when the woodsman cuts the tree down. It turns it into lumber. That lumber gets even more valuable when it has been milled. That milled lumber becomes even more valuable when a craftsman turns it into a table, right? Now, at no point has a boss an overseer, a manager added any of this value. That value comes purely from the workers. And so the best way I can explain it is to imagine that you're working at McDonald's, okay? And you have to make a burger. Now, when you make the burger, McDonald's pays you seven fifty an hour, we'll say, okay? And the, the current U.S. minimum wage is seven twenty five. We'll say 750, uh, just because it's an easy number for people to remember. So you get $7.50 an hour. Now you make that burger. They sell the burger for $5. Uh, 
of that five dollars how much goes to you well how much time did it take you to make the burger how much labor did it take you to make the burger right then we have the uh the value that the restaurant extracts from it there's things like overhead this is what marx was taking into account when he was talking about it your different overheads your costs of equipment things like that and those degrade over time but when added to the regular cost they got to be taken into account if the worker making the burgers is getting paid let's say you take his pay 750 an hour let's say it takes one minute we're looking at less than a dime um, for making that burger right and the company let's say after their overheads if they're charging six dollars for the burger and i know a little bit from having worked at mcdonald's what the labor percentages are and everything so i can say pretty confidently that we are we're being generous to mcdonald's if we say they're only keeping a third all right so that six dollar burger that you got paid 10 cents to make the company has made six divided by three two dollars off of that is 20 times what you make that's the profit you made that profit for them that's the labor theory of value that burger only exists because you put it together right and the ingredients that you use to put it together only exist because of the farmer and the shipper and all of that and in nowhere in that equation is the franchise owner or the corporate executive doing anything that adds value to that burger they are dictating the value so that's something that uh that we'll talk about next time is uh the dictated value of things but that's that's the basics of what the the labor theory of value is if you have any more questions about it um I know as an online leftist and what I just said in the beginning of this video, how, how we tend to take things for granted when we're explaining stuff like theory. Uh, any questions, feel free to drop by and ask them. Uh, you can post it in a comment. You can send me a message. I'm available here. I'm available on Facebook. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about it more. Uh, I'm always up for discussions. Uh, anyway, I would love for you to uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, tell other people about this video. Um, as you can see, I'm looking a little fuzzy. That's because I'm having to use my laptop's webcam. Uh, I don't have a camera outside of my laptop and my phone. Um, and if you, uh, you want to see more stuff like this, there is a Touchbone Patreon. Uh, it's patreon.com slash touchbone. Uh, if you go there and subscribe, there are different subscriber perks. As I talked about in one of my previous videos, I'm not exactly uh, good at being a YouTuber or internet personality, and I'm not really good at monetizing my content. Uh, just about everything I make is available to everybody for free, um, mainly because I, I'm not a I'm not skilled at the business side of these things. I just like making stuff. Uh, so if you like the things I make, I would really appreciate you uh, liking, sharing, subscribing, all of those things that one does. Uh, next video, I'll see you guys tomorrow. That's uh, it's going to be about fake lore. It's not uh, a leftist thing. It's a storytelling thing that is interesting. And there actually is some hidden leftist politics in there. Uh, thanks to the 1950s and the way it was horrible. Um, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. I want you all to have a great day. And remember, I love you.